Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, IT guy needs to wear safety attire to do his job on a factory floor. Random VP is furious he wears that gear in his own office. The second story, I wrote an apology and told the whole truth about my colleagues. They did not like this apology. The third story, I did not follow the orders of the boss two and three, because by law I could not do this. On to the first story. New dress code for the IT department, of one person. The backstory, father-in-law works for a heavy equipment manufacturer, highway making equipment, machines for gold and gem mining, etc. The machines aren't really relevant to the story, only that they're big and scary enough that everyone is very strict about safety. Well, almost everyone. This company has one IT guy. He does everything from web admin to the ID badges to the printer isn't working, so obviously he needs an offer with a computer. Only problem is most of his job is keeping the ancient assembly line machines on life support, so he's constantly on the factory floor fixing error code TI-86 on machines C-137, etc. The problem. One day, one of the VPs of A-Kissing deigns to leave the plush veneer of the C-level Swedes to enter the plebeian office and takes great offense to the IT guy wearing jeans, boots, and a high-vis vest in their strictly suit-and-tie office. Protests about his job duties fall on deaf ears, and since the IT department of one person doesn't have an official C-level officer, VP of A-Kissing decides to write a new dress code for the IT department. Suit and tie at all times, no exceptions. IT guy shows up the next day in a suit and tie, tries to fix an error on the factory floor, and rightfully gets turned away at the door for lack of safety gear. He spends a few days in his office goofing off, while the errors on the factory floor grow and grow. The Fallout Finally around 3am one night, big production line X goes down. This is a huge contract for the company. The company might go under if this client goes elsewhere. As such emergency procedures state, all C-level execs and even the owner must be notified immediately if this line stops at any time for any reason. So the upper echelon of the company, including VPA Kisser, assembles in the boardroom to prepare for the firing spree. Around 5 a.m., IT guy is ordered to the boardroom, where they really lay into him before they fire him. Threats of blacklisting him in the industry, threats of lawsuits for damages, etc. Of course, there's the condescending, now what do you have to say for yourself question. The mic drop. He unfolds a few pieces of paper from his pocket and puts them on the table in front of the owner. This is why I have to wear a suit and tie no matter what. This was my objection because I have to do my job properly. This is the safety officer refusing me entry for lack of safety gear. And this is the record that VP A Kisser got my emails but never responded. Not a pin drop or a cricket chirp could be heard, just the faint ruffling of pages as the owner read. Finally, he spoke. Your so-called dress code is officially revoked. VP A Kisser is no longer allowed to have any authority over you. Please put on safety gear and fix machine TK41. The rest of us will stay here all day until I'm convinced that this problem will never happen again. VP A Kisser kept his job. He was very good at his namesake after all but he was transferred to VP of a division that didn't exist, and a workforce of one, only him. Rumor has it he's related to the owner somehow, but at least his self-righteousness can't ruin the actual work being done. The second story is, I merely wanted to apologize thoroughly for lack of how things worked. I was in the army and stationed in Korea, formerly enlisted but now a freshly minted second lieutenant slash butter bar. I'm gonna save a lot of time by just saying the battalion I was assigned to was one of the nightmare units people with 20 to 30 years career in the army claim to have never encountered. Adultery, drinking, drugs, the command sergeant major's daughter, who got put out of the army for adultery living with her daddy in his billets but turning tricks in the barracks with the troops. All known and covered by command. I think you're getting the idea. I was new as an LT and there to do two jobs. My professional one, not mentioning to keep from implicating unit, and to take care of my troops. So yes, guilty by complicity. I kept my head down, took care of my guys, and did my job rocking the boat as little as possible. Plus, sorry, brand new butter bar against a colonel and the majority of the battalion staff equals, career over, and possibly even jail time, even if I was in the right. Fast forward several months. I'm a loyal man, and had already annoyed command because I had gotten married just before shipping over to Korea and the unit. While other officers had enlisted girlfriends or favorite drinking girls, I took extra duties, covered watch shifts and duties, and let them have their fun. My first wedding anniversary was coming up though, and I wanted to fly my wife to Korea to join me for a couple weeks, and so we could go out to dinner for our first anniversary. 
I submit the needed papers to command. Approve no problem, even though my anniversary falls on the same date as the planned battalion and branch annual ball. I make the arrangements and she comes to join me for a couple of weeks. Once she's in country though, I get informed that my attendance will be mandatory and that spouses will not be allowed. I also find out they're planning booze and strippers for the ball. I complain and the battalion S1 calls me in, tells me I at least need to buy my ticket to support the unit and thus would be in attendance, wink wink. Yes, he literally gave me a two winks. So I did, paid for my tickets but went out for the night with my wife instead. The next day I'm called in and read the riot act. Behavior unbecoming, disobeying a direct order, etc, etc. But they're just going to give me a written reprimand and some extra duties for a month. No biggie. They're being nice. As I said earlier though, prior enlisted, former NCO sergeant. I knew something like that in the file was a career ender for an officer. Then the S1, a major, said it. Maybe if you write a good apology considering your newness, they'll take that into consideration. And my light bulb went off. The document had a comment section for the accused. I thanked him and went to write my apology. The thing is, I knew they might try to screw me at some point because unlike them, I was not dirty and they had nothing on me, so I had started recording everything and I had my notebook with me. I wrote out everything in the form of an apology. I apologized for my lack of understanding of how things work properly and pledged to find an enlisted girlfriend to move into my barracks with me, just like insert name and ranks of three officers I knew had been doing so. I apologized and pledged to be a more team activities participant, enter details of two separate times the unit had had morale functions, and rented entire bars to include paying for the rooms for the night of all the girls who worked there and lived upstairs. Yes, drinky girls who worked the bar and took clients upstairs to their room for better tips. I apologized and pledged to encourage troops to go see the chaplain and pay for private counseling sessions with the assistants, even though they could get it cheaper on the local economy, etc, etc. I filled the comment section, added a see attached page, and filled out another entire sheet of official government paperwork front and back. When I was done, I signed everything and handed it to the S1 for review. At first he was all smiles, but as he reviewed my comment, I've never seen a black man turn that shade of red, leaning towards purple before. I had listed enough infractions to not only end the whole chain of command's careers, but send many of them to jail for a long time. My career was not ending alone. To his credit, he did not scream at me after finishing reading what I wrote. He composed himself, regained some color, and politely told me that I could not write that on there, and that he would print me another copy. He almost exploded when I told him, no, that I'm sorry, sir, that's my apologies, and my comments in the comment block, and I refused to sign any documents without it included. You would swear he was staring down a demon as he turned red again, when I added, but if you like, sir, if I understand correctly, you can take it to legal to request it all be removed. Then you can keep it without my apology. He sat there fuming for way too long. I was actually thinking he might explode and strike me at any moment, when very quietly he told me to get out. I gave him a crisp yes sir, as I snapped a salute, which earned me a sharp get out, as he pointed to the door and I just left. The next day every senior officer I ran into in my chain of command was very polite and even helpful. Stayed that way for about two weeks during which time my wife returned to the states. Then I got called up to see the battalion commander in front of formation. He presented me with early orders for promotion to 1st LT, and in front of the whole battalion, informed me that he had been informed that there were openings in the upcoming ranger school, and said he could think of no one better to go. He offered to get me in, but I would have to clear command, and be ready to leave Korea in like 5 days time. I thanked him heartily. He shook my hand congratulating me, said I should get to it then, and then sent me back to my platoon. Formation was dismissed, and I sent the next several days getting all the help I needed to get out of there as fast as possible. The last story is... You want me to work for free? I will, but only in accordance with the law. In the institution where I work, there were four levels of bosses, and let's call them this. Boss number one. This is my direct boss, the man who hired me because he knew he needed someone exactly like me. He was in control of his department, and his immediate superior did not have the authority to give him any instructions. And while he might require certain things from him, he could not make changes to his department without boss number one's approval. Boss number two controlled several units, such as the one in which I worked. He could give orders from above, but he could not interfere with the work of individual teams. Boss number three controlled a large number of bosses, so without his and boss two's approval, nothing could have happened. Still, he could not directly interfere with the work of individual teams, like those in control of boss number one. Boss four ruled everyone, could omit all others in their decisions, but after making decisions, boss number three did them, in the way he wanted. As long as he kept the goal and the effect of the boss number four's decision, it was okay. So here I am. Boss number one, with whom I worked with in another field, asked me to work for him in this idiotic institution. 
Okay, I agreed because I respected and admired him a lot. Besides, I wanted to help. It quickly turned out that with my involvement I jumped directly into a black hole of bureaucracy and mutual personal agreements, full of mobbing, humiliation, ridicule of people, things I've never met before. In addition, I quickly understood that Boss 2 and Boss 3 were having an affair, and whatever I did, it was immediately distorted, twisted, and the opinion about me went to Boss Number 3 in the worst possible form. It got to the point where I cried for hours hiding in the toilets, and I had panic attacks when the phone rang or I got an email. I felt so threatened that I didn't sleep or eat. I've become the wreckage of a woman. Boss Number 1 got angry and went straight to Boss Number 4. He said I had competencies and skills well beyond my job, that this is some kind of a mockery and a joke, that I perform the idiotic tasks for boss number two for a minimum wage, and I still don't get any of the recognition I should get, and he demanded a promotion for me, so that I would not be dependent on this stupid woman and her boss lover anymore. Such words were not spoken, of course. It was way more cultured conversation. Boss number four agreed. Well, but how could I be promoted? Boss two and three couldn't take it. So instead of promoting me, they terminated my employment contract and organized a new competition for my new position, which I was forced to enter. The whole procedure was humiliating for me and other recruitment participants, and it lasted three months, during which I had no job. So, no fee at all. But I was the only one who could deal with some particular tasks, so if I was to quit my job, my job for free, I would have to destroy the work of a huge number of other people who depended on me. So I kept working. No money, no position. With the hope that maybe I will win the competition. And here I come to the point. What was my way of malicious compliance, you may ask? I based it on the Personal Data Protection Act. Since Boss 2 and 3 put me in such a situation, I decided I would do everything to prevent the people below me from getting hurt, that I will allow everyone else to do their work. But for three months I did not accept any bill, no contract, and I did not reply to any email with personal data that I received from Bosses 2 and 3. If I'm not an employee, I must not do such a thing. I did everything for Boss number 1 and gave him all the documents to sign. He could approve anything that concerned us in our work, but nothing else. Bosses 2 and 3 would come to me and shout, threaten me, get angry, and I was willing, waving my hands and saying, after all, according to the law, I'm not allowed to do this. I will of course do this if you send me an official instruction in writing that I must carry it out, or if you sign an employee contract with me. I made it as difficult as I literally could. And after three months, I was accepted into a new position anyway, and I freed myself from them. Like I said, I knew my boss number one very well. He asked for my help. I would never even start it there otherwise, and it ended up to be a good decision. He later sponsored my international studies, that I could never ever afford myself, and I was working for him at another place, and I'm still working there, basically making my dreams come true. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a nice day.